Hi, my name is Stefan Falke and I'm a professional photographer living in New York. I was uh, born in Germany and I've lived in New York on and off for 30 years. I always say I'm a photographer because I work in, in, in several fields of photography and, and photojournalism is probably the a line that goes through my work, but it's from interiors to fine art to photojournalism to portraiture. I'm a photographer. That is a good question because many people believe you, you do portraits and family portraits and weddings and, and events. I do events here and there but I don't do weddings or family portraiture unless it's uh, clients whom I know and, and, and see something in, in, you know, something creative in the work I can do, but I don't have a portrait studio. Uh, I'm, I'm basically a magazine photographer, that's how I started out. Style I'm not sure about. People say I have a style. I, I don't personally see that or pursue any style. It really develops with the project because my personal work is, uh, is long-term projects that, that when I'm starting it I don't really know where I'm going with it and then it, the style develops while I'm working on it. So you will have a consistent style inside one project but it may change in the next project, depending on what I'm shooting. I'm a total reportage uh, type of photographer. Even when I, my, my, my career started on movie sets, I've shot 20, 30 major movie productions as a stills photographer. And I treated that work as a reportage. I mean, I was shooting like all these 16 hours that, that you're on your feet and <clears throat> nonstop. And that kind of defines the reportage photographer. He's like shooting all day, <laughs> Every, everything you see, you know. I'm just, I was born in Germany and my country was divided uh, by a brutal physical border, uh, as, as you know from east to west, uh, it divided two political systems. And when I moved to New York, uh, you know, I always had, I have border in my head. Uh, and, and at the same time, I love binational or even trinational areas. I moved into a corner of Germany where it meets Holland and Belgium. And I would constantly cross these borders, uh, sometimes three times a day, because I loved being part of different cultures at the same time. And so by nationality and border, physical border in one package just drew me there. And then realizing that the, the, the news from there were all on the negative side. So people focused on, on, on illegal immigration, uh, crime, drugs, and so on. And I always get a little suspicious when I hear only bad news from a particular area of the world because it's always just a part of the story. Yes, I mean, uh, Trinidad was seven years. The, the border is ongoing and I started it in 2008. So whenever I have a budget uh, or somebody wants a story from there or, or have exhibitions on the border, I will use that time, the invitation to go there and I use that time to keep, keep going with my work. So it's, um, it's a big border. <laughs> That's another good question. I wish people understood, and that's why I practically created this project, uh, people understood that the, the negative uh, aspects of that border, which are all true, uh, are only a small part of the story. There's, uh, it's an amazing binational 
cultural space that that is so fluid. I mean, you, if you if you spend a lot of time there, you don't even realize there is a border anymore. Uh, one of the Indian uh, artists once told me, "Listen, the border can't stop the music." So it's that kind of. Uh, uh, sense that the border is really a, 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 almost like a nation on both sides which belongs together. It's like a strip of 100 miles wide and 2,000 miles long. That is one cultural space that's just enormously creative. I'm not really the researching type of photographer, I have to be there. And the same with the border, uh, it's actually my concept not to research because I need to be turned on, so to speak, by what I'm seeing, what I'm experiencing. Uh, if, if I research too much, I'm already preoccupied with what I would find and what I, you know, I'm, I'm expecting things. I want to be surprised. That depends, you know, I'm a working photographer, so it depends on, on assignments and uh, the, the magazine work is not dead, but people don't send you around anymore. They, they, they hire you locally and, and that's pretty much it. I mean, I wouldn't be sent to New Jersey for that matter. Uh, it's just the, the truth. Um, so uh, I, have, I have a big project in, in Washington DC this weekend. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm out there a lot really. Uh, either self-propelled or paid for. I would say it's like half-half. Uh, when I worked on movie sets, it was I, it was like uh, almost 100% work because the mo movie business kind of draws you in and keeps you. And. Uh, I started my own projects from coming out of that world where you would work every day, all year, every year. And I realized that, you know, when you do your own personal projects, and needless to say, the pressure is gone. I mean, you have self-inflicted pressure, but, the, but you are free to do whatever you like to do and, 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 and your own, at your own timing. Working on assignment is, is a whole different animal. Uh, you know, you got to do things on time, you got to come up with something no matter what, uh, you know, which I usually do, but uh, it's, it's a lot of pressure. Print is still it. I mean, holding something ten tangible, uh, you yeah, know, it's just a different way of looking at things and, and, and you really zoom out of whatever else you're thinking or doing and you just look at the product. Uh, it, it's just something else, sending somebody an email with your, your, your PDF attachment than sending them a little and that's why I love Blurb. You can do any size, any, any you know, uh, page count, it's just a little, you know, it's just, it's personal. Maybe that's the word. Super important. Yeah, I had no. my, my wife was helping and the writer for the book, uh, Claudia Steinberg, she was helping uh, and that was really helpful because uh, as a photographer you're just so close to your work. And I had another book that I tried to edit myself and you wouldn't want to see another picture after you've gone through 20. And now the book has 230 pictures in it and people can't stop looking at it. So the flow of things is, is something that the photographer cannot necessarily do him or herself. I like both. I mean, this Keep Going New York book really is a pandemic baby. Uh, I was shooting the work for a month, almost a year. And then I was just starting to play with it because you couldn't meet anybody, you can't see anybody. So, and finding a publisher, to be honest, today is a different thing than, than 10, 20, just 10 years ago because today nobody will produce the book for free anymore. Um, so, Blurb and, and, and other self publishing platforms are a beautiful opportunity to just sit at home and do it yourself. Again, the danger is that the photographer like me thinks he can do everything himself so that's that's a little danger zone
just me and uh, I'm lucky that I really wanted to be a graphic designer if I'm if I'm thinking way way back I used to draw cartoons and then my father gave me a camera and then like the typical story uh, although he wanted me to be a civil engineer but he made a mistake giving me a camera and I always say the camera won uh, but I but I was really interested in, in, in graphic design like we had album covers and stuff that we would sit over all day every day so I have a sense for you know using lettering and and uh, you know for the general graphic design. I'm not saying I did an amazing job, but I'm pretty proud of it. I was actually in Florida and all of a sudden, uh, what was that, mid, mid March, all of a sudden the, the news were becoming so uh, Pressing, like I thought they would close the states. I thought uh, my daughter lives in Florida, but I, I thought I couldn't come home to my wife <laughs> if I didn't get in the car. I got in the car overnight and drove to New York, and it was the most bizarre thing ever. I mean, I went into the into the Lincoln Tunnel all by myself. There was not one car that night, uh, and that's when I realized, wow, this is real. I get goosebumps just saying it. Right away, pretty, pretty much right away. I went to Times Square. I think that was my first trip, uh, if I remember, and, and, and there was nobody there. I mean, that's except for the naked cowboy, and he is in the book. That was, and he, he was wearing a mask. It was, it was less the fact that he was the only person there, but he was wearing a mask, the naked cowboy with the mask. It was like, like wow, here's something going on. No, it was more intended as, a, first of all, as getting me through the pandemic. I mean, and photography does that for me. Uh, I, I, I had so many situations that I turned around through photography. So just going out and being, being part of it and, and just doing something creative with it makes you forget that you could be depressed or, or something. Very well. I mean, for for a self-publishing uh, project, it has sold very well. But even better than that, I got a huge assignment out of it from a financial institution that, through a, an agency, picked up the topic uh, and wanted me to reshoot, you know, similar scene, not not the same scenes, but pe one person walking through the frame in terms of uh, showing the energy and the, the and 20, we choose 20 locations. It was a big project. So self, you know, personal project to corporate assignment can happen. There's no goal. I mean, the next thing I will do is will be an, an, another project. And But as with my older projects, it, they all come back to me, they, they, they had like exhibitions and I was with the, the board, I had 20 huge exhibitions and uh, Keep Going New York had one in Germany and one here in New York uh, and now they, I was nominated for another photo festival, can't really talk about it yet, but uh, you know that will continue and, and I'm not shooting anymore for it, uh, although that's not really true, <laughs> I still have this when people cross the street, I can't help but take a picture. Every one of my projects have found me. I, I'm, I'm not sitting at home thinking about projects because it just doesn't work with me. I know the next one is already waiting. Uh, I just don't know what it is yet. Thank you so much. Just to give you a little idea. And you got the soft cover and then... The hard cover? Beautiful, gorgeous. Thanks you so much. Thank you.